some of the things you really don't want to rivet because foam will cave in on itself at the at the point of it It'll leave, uh, and it will tear. It'll Most leave. of the things you use with yeah. rivets are Centra, like that. So all of that, there's no glue on there at all. It's all riveted. And some uh, and a lot of Chicago screws and a lot, a lot of Velcro. Of but we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get into that. Um, what was your question? Yeah. Okay. Can you use a drill press? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you guys are all tools, use them. Yeah, that, that's a little bit more under the yeah. power tools element. Of for things. for punching these holes, I actually have an attachment that is made out of tungsten carbide. It is the exact uh, width of the Chicago screws, and I just jack that into my Dremel. I mark where I'm going to put my holes. On my armor, and then when I get the vest or whatever I'm mounting it to, I will put it on with a little paintbrush, and I'll dab the paintbrush, poke, and then I'll punch holes in my vest, and then I just wash her and screw it together. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, uh, with uh, with EVA foam, as far as the actual cutting elements and things. Uh, you'll want to have uh, cutting blades or a heat knife. Um, that's an example of a heat knife down there. It's also known as a weller. Um, it allows you to get, like, it, it helps cut the foam kind of like butter. And it just goes right through it, and you'll get right, really good shapes. You they need won't. to be careful with it sometimes because you will burn yourself if you're not, if you touch the, uh, the metal contact bit, so just be careful. I, I find that using the weller will also not leave frayed or chewed up edges. If you just go straight razor blade, do multiple cuts. Don't just cut it all at once, like jam it in there hole so like dab a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until it goes through it. Hi. <laughs> um, There's a microphone there. Well wait guys. But Where yeah, the, the weller uh, myself I find is the easiest thing for working with EVA foam. Um, also there, there are, are a few other tools but that's mm -hmm. basically yes. Um, what do you think is ideal for cutting the Sintra? Sintra. Uh, well, like, 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 under, like we said on the, uh, the power tools here, you probably want to have um, either a Dremel or a jigsaw, or if you're lucky enough, having a bandsaw is a little more expensive. It, it also ball. depends on the thickness of the Sintra. Like the Sintra he used for his knife, the three mil, you can use that hot knife. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually just use conventional scissors. But yeah, I yeah. personally use a Dremel 3000 with a tungsten carbide or tungsten carbide tile cutting wheel because it's metal. It doesn't break. It doesn't snap. A lot of people will buy like the regular cutting wheels, but they're basically like sandpaper discs. Mm -hmm. And if you're too rough with it and you're doing too many curves, they just chop and go flying. Yeah. Which is also why we recommend goggles or glasses because you don't want one of those things flying in your eye at like 300 miles an hour. So not much. <laughs> uh, moving on to templating. Uh, a lot of the times there's two methods of doing templating. You could be uh, making your own or you can find them online. Now when it comes to freehanding, uh, the difficulty kind of varies project to project. Oh, yeah. So freehanding. Um, I am hated in this room right <laughs> yes, now. Yes, you are. I am hated because none of these people, which Ted Van West, Victor, or Mickey here, have ever really free. free well. He has a great example of a free hand, but um, most of my stuff, I'm going to say 99.9.9% .9 of everything I do is free handed. Why? Because um, I'm not a kind of template guy. So there's downsides and there's upsides to free handing. Upside, you don't have to take time to look at your uh, templates and cut them out and everything and actually put them together. Uh, put them together. It takes a lot of time. with with uh, um, what is it called? If you're running with templates, then you can get like 100% game accuracy. What, what is the um, stuff that you use here? Oh, Papakura. Papakura. Papakura is a um, thing that a lot of people don't do. I hate it, personally. And it's the um, formation of paper, like little tiny pieces of paper that you have to connect together like puzzles and tape them. And once you build it together, you fiberglass, you put it over it. I that, That's the spot of Satan for me right there. Yeah. So. You will also it, it, find Pepakura files for foam, um, which are unfolded, and that's what this one is. So this was a Pepakura file. I could have built it out of tabs and um, and paper and done the fiberglass route. Um, well, also I did it. So instead, I did it with the foam. So it's this exact same process, um, other than that on this one, then you have to have to cut your your angles to make sure that your pieces line up on the foam. Yeah. So, but when you go to freehand, there's. Um, you obviously have to take a marker to the foam and draw out what you want to cut out. You just don't go at it. There is cheats to freehanding and what you can do. 
you can cut out a piece, and if you need a mirror piece, you just put that piece onto the foam and you trace go it over it. Down. Yeah, it. and you trace it, but you want to go inside the line, not in the middle or the, on the um, outside. You want to go on the inside of the line because that's where the um, point of contact is for that um, mirrored piece. Um, I like doing it because it takes less time. If you are biting on time right now and you're, you're just trying to bite it as hard as you can, you literally just have to go into the phone and just do it. That's all I can say. It, it, kind of, it kind of depends on the project too. A lot yeah. of things like this laser rifle is a really good example of something that can be definitely done freehand. Uh, it's very plain, it's a very simple object. It requires very little uh, amount of massive like shapes or you know anything. I mean it's basically a box with uh, a pipe and a handle. You know it's yeah. simplistic. Things like this helmet on the other hand you're probably going to want to do a file with because it's very convoluted, you know, huge shapes, yeah. rounded bits. You got to learn angle cuts, that sort of stuff. So, Ted, um, do you have your pistol? Uh, it's actually right down there on the uh, table. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, uh, that's yeah. also an example that's of That's a great this freehanding piece right there. Is by him. I forgot my helmet that I freehanded. It was really cool. But this is an amazing example by the great Ted. Um, he is amazing with what he does. This is 100% freehanded, no templates, anything. And it is put together of just, that's another thing. That's your template. You look at pictures and you just go for it. And there's a lot of um, folding techniques with foam. I think we might talk about. It's really weird. It makes the foam kind of bubble out into a uh, kind of a spherical shape. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, uh, so, you can, so you can fold it and get your, get your angles better. Yeah. It's and it forces itself inwards and creates you know a, uh, a dome, and it's nice. But this is something that um, I honestly I'm a little jealous about. Um, the trigger works and everything. It comes back. Yeah, it has it safety. Pen springs on the inside of that thing. Just it's, two old pins and the trigger. It's honestly a beautiful, um, beautiful one. I don't know if this was freehanded. That was that actually two was freehanded. This was also freehanded, and this is a great example because it doesn't. It's not just foam. Um, as we can see, it has a little bit of PVC. Uh, that's PVC for the actual bottom, and the stock itself and the actual grip are, are made out of cinder, but the top part's all uh, foam on the top. Yeah, and it's it's honest, it's really beautiful. And, and then you also get the added thing of with a project like this. And if you look here in the stock, these are actually bottle caps that he put in there that are just the right shape and design. So a lot of the stuff you do, I mean, don't be afraid to mix outside stuff uh, in with your projects or props. You'll find that sometimes something out of the store or something that you see will fit a perfect part for what you're working on. Uh, yes. Two questions. What is it? What's the glue that you're using to glue your phone? That's a great question. Well, well we're, we're gonna get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, what's the cost of cinder versus? Uh, uh, it depends on where you go. Yeah. I go to Montreux Sign uh, Supply. They do like big uh, printed signs out of like uh, Sintra or a foam board. Uh, I buy their six millimeter Sintra. I think is like or six millimeter is. 60 bucks for eight feet by four feet sheets and then the three mil is about like 30. So with an entire sheet, like if you were to do the Mando thing, you can get an entire Boba Fett and Django Fett. Now what Ted's got here is essentially a Boba Fett. It's a back, shoulders, all the chest plates and the knees and a cod piece. Django would also have thighs and shins and uh, boots bats. Um, so I mean, it depends on your project and what you're looking to use. Honestly, if you want to start with something simple and something that's a little bit easier, but you can use the heat gun or you can use like the hot knife with, go with the three millimeter. Six millimeter, you're going to need something like a Dremel or some type of power saw, maybe like a scroll saw to cut through. And then, like I said, obviously, I prefer to just cook my plastic in the oven because I can do an entire day's worth of shaping in like less than 10 minutes. So, I mean, it really depends. Can you say the name of that company again? Montroy. Uh, it's M O uh, M O N T R O Y. Okay. It's like uh, it's about 19th Avenue in McDowell. Uh, there's also a few other places. I know some of the clubs have uh, joint memberships at a few other places. I don't really remember the names of those, but that's where I personally go. You just go into their side door 
and they've got a desk and you'll be like, I need three millimeters intra or six mil and they'll give you a price, you say yes and then they bring you a sheet and then if you've got a car, make sure you tell them you need a cut up. It's cost an extra ten bucks, but they'll make it fit in your car. Or have a friend to truck. Going back to uh, the whole Hepicura thing, if you're interested in trying to do that, there's some good websites that already have pre-selected models. Uh, some examples are uh, OneCura, uh, Replica Prop Form, and the 405th. Now, if you wanted to make like Halo armor, the 405th is really the site that you want to look at. Um, that's where a lot of the, the templates you will, you'll find for that. There's a lot of interesting uh, movie and video game props off in Replica Prop one. Form, and uh, OneCura is just kind of like everything. That's, that's expected. That, that, there, you will, that, that is a good question. There, you, most Pepicura files you will find are free. On Etsy and a few other places like that, you can find uh, premium Pepicura files, they're not necessarily better, they're just people who are who have made enough files that hopefully they're good enough that it's worth paying for them. They're usually about, um, for a full set of gear, um, I've looked on Etsy for um, Titans from Destiny, yeah. they are about, for a full kit, for uh, templates, for foam, is about $10 yeah. for a full one. A helmet is like 5 bucks. It depends on the maker, some yeah. people yeah. also depends on the charge maker. more, but... Uh, yeah, there's also a lot of different types of uh, files out there. So, I mean, if you don't think it's out there, uh, like I said, one it's they said one is good. There also used to be a Peppa <laughs> Curl library, which then got converted into one Yeah. And they've got a search function. So if you guys are looking for something specific, just go ahead and sign in, log into their or thing, set up an account, and uh, look it up. Yeah. Failing that, you can learn 3D modeling and learn how to do one Peppa Curl unfolds and do it yourself. Um, that's a very long process, and that's about where I started 10 years ago, which is why I'm now able to do stuff like this in about 20 hours. Do you want to, do you want to mention the whole scaling bit? <laughs> the, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> scaling in Peppacura is an interesting thing, and that's one of the things you want to watch out for when you're downloading files, because you will find some files are locked, which means you can't mess around with them. You can't change the scale, you can't change where the tabs are, you can't change whether it's an A4 paper or letter. Uh, which is another to look out for because it's very popular across the world. We use letter size paper in, in, in the United States. Pretty much everywhere else uses A4 size paper, and that will mess up your printer if you're trying to say, hey, I need this helmet printed on this. It'll say, hey, you want to resize it? And you're like, uh, no, not really. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the right size right now. <laughs> um, so watch out, for, watch out for locked files and make sure it says a little display on the bottom. It says how big it is. It's going to be in millimeters. Um, buy yourself a nice little millimeter measuring tape for working with Pepper <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to go back and forth between inches and millimeters. On America! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we conform? Um, so that, that's something to watch out for. Um, there's a hidden function in Pepper that I just learned about. I've been using this program for like eight years. I found out about this six months ago. If you right click on, on one side of the program, if there's a major distance between two points, it will let you highlight the 3D model and say, hey, how far is it from this ear to this ear? And then you'll know whether the helmet's going to fit in your head or not. I didn't know that. No, I know yeah. you asked me earlier <laughs> about the cutting and the, the different types of plastic. The picture on the bottom right here is three millimeter Sintra, and I did that with a hot knife. And that's a steel gauntlet from Skyrim, and that took me two hours. So, I mean, you can go through that stuff. It, it cuts right through the three mil Sintra just like it does EVA, uh, EVA foam for the most part. It's a little bit slower because it's a thicker material, but or more dense, not thick, really. And you, yeah, you're much more precise with the weller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, excuse me. Would that, would the hot knife work on leather? Yes. Um, yes. It's beautiful. Yes. It really depends on the thickness of the leather, and also you got to deal with the smell of burnt flesh. Yeah. So <laughs> That's a little off for me. Uh, it is. <laughs> Why well, probably it's, using maybe a respirator or something to cover your mouth while you're doing it so you don't yeah. well, it, it, it won't it's not it. really toxic, it's just a really foul smell. So yeah. um, for leather just, just using a standard regular leather cutting sharp knife is probably a better bet, but a hot knife might help. A really big scissors. Yeah. That's what I use. <laughs> Well, uh, moving on to uh, the whole forming aspect of the actual armor. So now when, you're, when you've got all your templates cut out and you're all ready to, to get moving on to the next step, uh, you'll want to heat up your, your foam or your plastic with uh, the heat gun or like uh, Victor had mentioned earlier with, uh, with an oven. And once you get to that right temperature for things to uh, be flexible so you can move them, you'll want to use your gloves and you'll want to actually start forming it bit by bit. 
with the with the heat gun, you you have a little bit more control, at least when it comes to foam projects, in my opinion. I I'd rather I, I think Citra is better for using the oven, but yeah. for, for foam, you want to actually use a heat gun a little bit more because that'll uh, that'll slowly open the pores, the the actual cells in the foam, and that'll expand them, and that'll allow you to uh, shape things to the way that you want them. And you know sometimes it doesn't always go the right direction you want it to, so you probably heat it up again and then just try and bend it again until you finally get the actual shape that you want for your project. Um, the uh, little disclaimer on the bottom here is that you don't want to heat the, the the actual foam or the plastic too long because otherwise it will melt. It, it, it breaks the, the pores and you'll get like these huge like bubbly black nasty like nasty. rotting looking spots on yeah. whatever you're working for. So now if you want to do that as a purposeful weathering technique, yeah. go for it. It's beautiful. But uh, I do want to also add when it comes to shaping certain parts of the armor, such as back plates, you always need your physical back and another person's hands. So yeah, you're not you gonna be able mind. you're not gonna be able to shape Things the back plate really for close. you by yourself. It's a little bit Beware. hard. Um, armor makes it's a group activity. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes required. Um, now, th th now, this is kind of an interesting part. Uh, with with real armor, there's the uh, the system called quenching, and this is when you quickly uh, dip whatever you're in you're, you're working on into water, and that'll and uh, uh, oil. really what oil. Oil. oil? Sorry, excuse me. And uh, into oil, and that will actually uh, harden the, the steel. And there's kind of a similar process when it comes to plastic armors, except we just use water instead of oil. We're uh, less messy. Uh, but running in order, it will, uh, running the armor underneath cold water will harden the actual materials in place. Yeah, it'll do it a lot faster than letting it cool. Ted, I have a question. Yeah. Does it work with foam? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, it, it, also <laughs> works, uh, it also works with hot glue, but you got to be careful with that because you're leaving the foam cold. And if you got to do additional gluing, it kind of gets in the way. Yeah. Don't use hot glue. Just make, make sure you're not making too much of a mess. Uh, this, like I said, also uh, on, on here, uh, this could take multiple tries, and you'll you'll probably be working on one bit, and then uh, you'll cool that off with water, and then you'll connect it to the next piece that you want, and then you'll bend that, and you cool with water, and it's, it's kind of varies per per project that you're actually working on. Um, but it's it's kind of an interesting science on how the actual uh, the, the comparison between quenching with real metal armor to uh, plastic armor. Uh, onto assembly. Um, there's lots of adhesives that people will use. Um, like we had mentioned earlier, a lot of times people uh, starting off will, will use hot glue for foam because it will like fuse the foam pieces together. But it's not entirely reliable here in Arizona because of the heat. You'll want to use uh, other types of uh, contact cements or uh, super glue to keep stuff in place. Super glue also is a little tentative when it comes to EVA foam because certain types of glues will eat through foam, so you just need to keep an eye out for that type of thing. Usually you'll find um, on the warning labels for the types of glues that you're looking at, that, you know, whether it will like, burn through plastic or uh, through foam. So you'll want to be uh, very careful when doing that. If, if you do not like using super glues and you're comfortable with hot glue, make sure you get a high heat hot glue gun mm -hmm. and the high heat uh, sticks because those, you know, the high heat, they're obviously going to last a little better in higher temperatures. But honestly, it, along with the war blood, like I said, I mean, we're in 115, 116 degree weather. I don't really highly recommend it, but you can still do it. By the way, um, super glue will burn your skin. Oh, yeah. It'll it, burn your skin. Um, it'll glue your eyelids together quicker than the whistle. It'll glue your fingers to you, to yourself, or your project. Do not touch your face if you've got it on your eye. Quick story here. Um, I use super glue on my pants. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, we're going there. I use two I've types seen that of adhesives. There, there is two types of adhesives I've used and I'm gonna tell you make sure you have padding because the um my Titan for the um, the plate right here on my Titan, I use super glue. It went straight through the pleather. I'm stuck. One second. I got it went straight through the pleather and I had to tear it off because it burned. And it was not a nice, you know. And um, <laughs> also, contact cement. Toxins and stuff. Contact cement will also burn your skin. Yeah. 
it, it will, and it's horrible, and it, it, it's not even a burning sensation. It's like a sting. It feels like you just got hit by, like, 20 bees. It's not just, a fun feeling. It's definitely worse. always recommend, like, latex or, you know, glove. Yeah, some type so of glove if you're going to be um, medical or leather-working glove. If you're going to have a, um, if you're having a, a tight suit, like my cat suit here, which I use for cat and water, thank you very much, um, you want to have a mannequin. And we, we have mannequins. Duct tape mannequin. Duct tape mannequin is one of the more cheaper alternatives than going out and buying a mannequin. I have a couple that I've given to, I've given to him, but the full body ones, which we're still looking for, they're super hard to find. They, they're around 300 to $400 for a good one. My first mannequin, I, I got, my friend gave it to me and it was shot up, bullet holes everywhere, and we're still using it today for painting. So if you're gonna do bodysuit work like he did, great example on his he um, he did Raziel from Soul Reaver. It's a really old game and it was a full um, uh, it's a full body uh, morph suit. But, full but body basically morph suit. what I did with that is um, I uh, I attached the uh, muscle pieces to the suit with contact cement. Now. And I they were made out of foam. The way, so but. yeah. So always have a mannequin if you're gonna go into advanced stages of working with uh, suits and stuff because it will chemically burn your skin and it is not it will it will sting for a while. Yeah.